Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Moorride Alltrek equalizer system on a 2020 Keystone Montana. Now here's what they're going to look like installed and this is going to be a great pretty easy upgrade to install. It's going to give you a lot better suspension because of the ability to have a little bit more travel and that just means a better towing experience overall. Now our previous equalizer here you can see that it does have rubber and that's going to allow this to kind of move up and down and have that cushion these are pretty loose here which is fine it does have that movement and each of them are about i'd say an inch and a half so you have some movement up and down and that's where putting it side by side you can see the all trek is not only it seems like it's a little bit taller but that's because you have four inches of movement here because you have this rubber that's supporting that weight and as this moves up and down it's going to be nice and even it's not going to be sloppy and you're going to get more of that suspension travel which allows your suspension to move a little bit more giving you a better ride overall and that's going to not only make for a smoother ride and kind of just be easier on your camper and its contents but also that's going to transmit all of that energy up to the pin box so it's really going to cut down on that porpoising because the suspension can kind of settle out and take those bumps away from your connection point now this is bolt-on installation in fact you can reuse your old wet bolts um, what i've found you might want to pick up a new wet bolt kit while you're here uh, that way you have you know all new components and new hardware in place now you it's not required to have a cross member uh, kit as well we are going to be putting one on here so yours may not look like this but it is not required to get this installed not only are you going to get more suspension travel allowing the suspension to work better but you also have 40 percent more rubber absorbing those shocks it's also going to be progressive so as it kind of presses up it's going to fight against that and really settle out the suspension so Having a little bit more cushion and more travel just means that suspension can really do what it needs to do. Now this does come as a quantity of two, so it's gonna allow you to get your tandem axle set up with one kit. But if you do have a triple axle, you are gonna wanna pick up another kit. That way you can get all of your equalizers done. Now in our process, we are gonna be upgrading um, our wet bolt kit as, long, as well as our shackles here. So ours will look new here, but if you are keeping yours, you're gonna be using these. So just make sure you keep these handy. Uh, and to get these loose, as I mentioned before, just knock that nut loose on the back side. You're going to want to hold it in place with the 13 16 uh, box end wrench here. And then on the back side, you'll have an 11 16 And these can get a little bit tricky. Um, sometimes you just need a, you can use an impact to kind of knock them loose. But if you don't have an impact and you're just using hand tools, I recommend a dead blow. Just hold that on there. And once you kind of get some impact on it, it should get that initial knocked off. Uh, that at least hard part knocked down um, and then you can go ahead and take the nuts off we're going to be taking them off here here and here our wet bolts are still going to stay in place but let's get the nuts off first now with the nuts off we are going to be taking off the wet bolts on the shackles first leaving this top one um, for last now if you are reusing your wet bolts you to get these out you do need to put a little bit of impact with a hammer um, so just hand tighten the nut on the back side that way when hitting on that it's not going to mushroom that out and it's going to keep your thread safe um, and just with a hammer just kind of give it a little impact and that should push it forward enough And something else too, the suspension's hanging. So if you have your floor jack, you can raise the axle and sometimes that's gonna kinda take some of that stress off and help it move. So I'm gonna get my floor jack and just kinda bump it and see if we can't get this alleviated. That way it'll slide out a little bit better. But you wanna be careful. Uh, there are splines on here. You don't wanna damage it. Um, ideally, if you are changing out your wet bolts, you won't have to worry. Um, but again, if you are reusing them, just kinda keep, keep uh, you know, keep that in mind. You don't want to damage them too much. And if you're having a hard time kind of getting the rest of this bolt out, if you can get a wrench behind it, a lot of times you can put that in place and use that to kind of hammer it out. I have a pry bar here. I'm just going to kind of lightly pull on it. And this one seems like we got our jack in a good spot here as to where it's not under a whole lot of pressure. So we have this one out. We'll go ahead. We'll do the same thing on this side. Now we got this side out, we can go ahead and get our top one out and remove our old equalizer. Now, just kind of dealing with what I have here, you may have something similar at home. Uh, we really had to fight on these bolts um, to get them to knock loose. In fact, we ended up using an air chisel. So highly, highly recommend uh, probably getting a wet bolt kit if yours are giving you that same issue. You can see we have our uh, brass collar here and it's seen better days. 
So uh, the great part is, is with our new equalizer, you do have uh, those already pressed in place, but to replace the ones on your leaf spring is probably a good idea while you're here anyway. So something I would just recommend, not required, but kind of my own personal opinion. So now at this point, you'll see that they have the brass collars already placed on the all track, which is kind of a nice little feature there. So you'll have fresh ones for your wet bolt. So go ahead, run this through, and then we'll get our nut on the back side. And I'm gonna get this snug. Uh, you don't wanna torque it all down until you have everything kind of in place. Um, but this will start here, and then we'll go ahead and we'll get our shackles put in as well. Now this first one is gonna be pretty easy, I think, to get in. Uh, if you need to push it along, best way, uh, you can probably hit on this center section, but sometimes if you need just a little pressure on the wet bolts, what you can do is take a socket and you can put your half inch end over the Zerk fitting, that way you're not damaging it, and just light taps kind of on each of them will help kind of get this in place. Now you may need to play around with your floor, floor jack to kind of get this aligned exactly to where this will go in. Ours was pretty good here, so we'll get this one in place as well. So we'll get our nuts tightened down now that we have everything in place. And uh, it's going to be the, obviously the same wrench as we used, but I'm going to just tighten it down enough. Um, you kind of want these splines to thread in. Uh, if you're using new hardware, it might, be a, it might fight you a little bit, but you should start to feel it kind of seat in. Um, but have your wrench here uh, ready so that way it's not spinning. And we're going to come back with the torque wrench. So again, you don't have to get crazy here. Just snug them all down. Now, if you notice this bracket here, uh, this is for a cross member. It's a separate install. So yours won't look like this unless you're adding it. That's why it might look a little bit different. Um, but again, this uh, if you are going to want to add cross members, this might be a good time to do it as well. So now we'll go ahead and we're going to torque them in the same fashion. So we'll start with this. Uh, the top bolt here, and then we'll do our shackles. Uh, the torque settings are gonna be found in the instruction manual, so just adhere to that. And if you need a torque wrench, we have these available here at E-Trailer. Generally, you can go to an auto parts store and rent one. Chances are, if you're doing suspension on your RV, you probably have one at home. Um, but go through, and once they bottom out, they're pretty close to that torque setting. I'm just putting just a little bit extra on them, but go through and torque these all down properly. Now that with everything in place, we do want to go ahead and make sure we grease our wet bolts. Even if you're reusing yours, you do want to make sure that there's grease packed in all of them. It's a good chance to kind of push some old grease out. So with everything greased up, this is officially installed. Now you're going to need to repeat, obviously, on the other side to get that one done. But you can take your supports out, your jacks, get your wheels and tires put back on this side, and get your other one installed and start using your new equalizer. And that was a look and installation of the Moorride All-Track Equalizer on a 2020 Keystone, Montana.